Hello folks and welcome to part 10 of Aquacaris. We finally get to make a little bit more of this project and edge it closer to completion. So today we have in store remaking these things and these are the pump brackets for the build. Now currently we're using these standard EK ones and these are actually the old style. They've since replaced them for the new reflection distro plates and similar. So as a number of you pointed out, these didn't really fit in with the build. They're a bit too shiny and uh, the look doesn't quite work. So it just seems like a logical thing since all the other parts of the chassis have been made from scratch. Why not do the same from this? And it's a good learning exercise because I use a lot of DDC pumps in my builds. So actually being able to make these myself and uh, customize them for each build is a really good idea. And this is a perfect platform to learn how to do that. So to that extent, we're gonna be working with this stuff, which is some 25 millimeter thick aluminium. Now this is actually 26.5 millimeters thick, but uh, trying to work with 30 millimeter thick aluminium on my machine is an absolute nightmare. So I went for 25 instead and just cut it down at 1.5 millimeters. It makes it a little bit slimmer anyway. So what you've just seen me make is this. One of my favorite little things, a fixture plate. Now I don't particularly need a fixture plate to be able to make something like this on my machine, but it will make things a lot easier. For a start, I don't have very much Z clearance. So actually sticking something like this in a vise, like say the uh, Saunders Machine Works uh, mod vise, yeah, it's actually a little bit too tall if I want to use some of the longer end mills. So that's not so ideal, whereas this is much flatter. Now, the other thing is that if I want to make lots of them, I can use the same dimensions for the exterior and basically just put them one on side and then flip them over, do the parts over here. And this should make locating and doing all the sort of more complicated arrangements a lot easier. Now, this is only made of acrylic, so obviously it has a bit of a lifespan, but I didn't want to commit to a full aluminium one when I don't actually know all the ins and outs. And from what I found out in the Ensys uh, backplate video, actually, acrylic works very well for a fixture plate that you're only going to be using a few times so the threads are actually pretty strong so it should be fine for this purpose and then when I've ironed out some kinks maybe I can make an aluminium one in the future. So the first order of operations now that we've got this done is we need to get this stock a little bit more appropriate because at the moment it won't really fit into this it's actually oversized so we need to cut it down to size and make it accurate and to do that we're going to drill four holes here and these are going to be the first mounting holes for this plate. So we've got two of these, we're gonna to need to do both of them. I'm just gonna do it really simple, just a little bit of double-sided tape on the back. Precision isn't that important on this particular operation and it's a very light milling kind of operation anyway. So tape will be absolutely fine. So we're gonna just do that. And then once these are ready, we can start putting it into the plate and have some proper fun.
Right, so I've now got my stack of aluminium blanks. So I've actually gone and made four rather than just the two that I need because that way I can use these later on without having to go through this process all over again. And I use these quite frequently as I mentioned earlier. So what's special about these is that they're dimensionally correct on the outside. This is about the best finish that I can possibly hope to achieve on this machine. It's just not rigid enough to do sort of deeper cuts and avoid witness lines, unfortunately. But because we're gonna be glass blasting it, it shouldn't really matter at all. And they're actually quite nice and smooth. But because they're the correct dimensions on the outside, I can use them for locating in the second operation sort of zone on the little fixture plate. Now I did notice a tiny little bit of flexing. I did expect that, but unfortunately two of the holes that I drilled we're in the wrong place. Uh, can't really go and fix that now. It's baked into the design. I don't really know how I did that to begin with, but uh, nevertheless, I can just use a couple clamps and it keeps it nice and rigid, but uh, definitely worth remembering if I choose to make an aluminium one, which I probably will because this won't last that long, I reckon. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these onto the second side and then we're going to hollow out the inside. Now that's actually quite an easy thing to do on a beefier machine, but because I can only step down 0.5 millimeters at a time, that's gonna take a really quite a long time because these are almost entirely hollow. So we're gonna to have to play it careful and I've got some rather long end mills for the corners as well. So I'm gonna to have to use the four millimeter one to get right in there, but it should just about manage. So fingers crossed that will all work out. Then what we're gonna do is we're then gonna flip them and we'll do all the fins on the top. And then after the fins are done, we'll glass blast them and then we'll take them back and then we're gonna skim just the top layer off the outside here. And then we're also gonna do a bright chamfer around the outside here. So that should leave the A pattern for the aqua in the middle, nice and matte. And then it'll be nice and shiny around the outside. So that's the plan, let's get to it. We're getting there. We've got two almost finished pump heat sinks now. We've got the fins all machined in, which was 
absolutely harrowing to say the least. The tool paths are fairly conservative, but it's always a little bit dicey when you're using 1.5 millimeter end mills on aluminium because you know, the tiniest little bit of vibration, you get some chatter. And remember, these are completely hollow. So there's lots of potential for chatter in a part like this. And a single bit of that, then boom, it'll just snap. And that's no good. Luckily, I had no breakages for those ones. In fact, I did break an end mill. You didn't see it because I just so happened I wasn't filming because it was on the second one. But it was actually the four millimeter one, the one which I was least expecting to break. Basically, I didn't quite torque it down enough. And then due to like a dodgy Z height that I put in, it cut it a little bit too deep, chattered, and then just ripped it straight out. Luckily, these parts were fine, but uh, obviously the end mill didn't do so well. But put a new one in there and it did fine. So now we've got to put these into the glass blasting setup, which I can't unfortunately film because my LEDs for it are currently in Ensys. So I need to get a new controller for that. But you have to take my word for it. I'll blast them and then we're going to put them back on the machine. We're going to do some bright chamfers around the Aqua logo here. And then we're also going to face these ones here. So everything else should be nice and matte. And we'll have a matte center and we'll have shiny faces on the outside if all goes to plan. So let's do that, finish these, and then we can install them in the mod. You know, it feels a little bit weird and nostalgic in a way, sitting next to this rig once again after an update. It has been so long and it just feels so good finally to chip away at a little bit of progress. I'm really happy with how these DDC heat sinks came out. Now the stock ones, they're still not that bad, but they definitely fit in a lot better with the glass beaded aluminium look and the little polished chamfers and cuts. I'm particularly happy with these polished cuts that are around the outside here because I think that adds an awful lot of sort of visual interest to the heat sinks themselves and it fits in wonderfully well with all the chamfers around the rest of the rig. Now I know these might seem like a little bit of an inconsequential detail at this point, but I reckon once the rest of the rig starts to build around it, things like this will start to stand out. So actually tackling this now I think is a good idea, especially since there's a hell of a lot that I have to replace on this rig as well that I can't even get into doing yet. So this radiator obviously needs to be replaced, which means I need to make a new distro plate for that, but I can't go ahead and make the new distro plate because I need to make a new back panel. Why can't I make the new back panel? I have the GPU, 
I have the GPU, but I don't have the EK water block for it yet. So I need the 1390 special limited edition block, and that's still being produced at the time of airing this video. So once that comes in and I can be sure of all the dimensions 100%, then I can start planning this replacement panel and I'll be able to do that quite quickly because I've obviously done one before. Doing one again won't be that hard. I've got the material, should be good. Now with all that planned, I'll then have the new dimensions, which I can then make this panel for. I don't want to make this before doing this because some parts might change and I want to have that flexibility retained. Now, what about this radiator? What am I gonna be doing with that? Well, I did show that I had an aqua computer one ready and waiting. I don't wanna use that actually. Um, the more I've been looking at it, the heavier it seems and the more I kind of dislike it. It's got a terrible design at the terminal end of it, which is going to be very difficult for me to retrofit into something like this. And actually there are loads of features around the radiator, which I quite frankly hate, and I'm gonna to have to remove in any way. So instead I've got an exciting, very, very slim radiator, which should be hopefully a lot easier to fit and result in something a little bit more interesting. But I'm saving that for a later date because I've still got an awful lot of planning to do around it. I don't want to lock myself in a little bit too early. Now, just in case you too were being annoyed by these cables, fear not, I will of course be completely redoing them. However, I'm going to do that far later so that I have as much flexibility as I possibly can do. So I'm going to do all the structural work and then when I get around to doing the cabling, I will do the pumps as well. It's far more logical to do them at that stage than way too early. It does unfortunately pay me to say that we are going to have to put another break on this project because even if the block were to arrive tomorrow, I need to do all of the CAD to make it work and actually that's an awful lot of work. So in the meantime, whilst I'm waiting for the bits and bobs and planning, I'm going to be doing a project in Corsair's 4000D and that should be a fun one. It's going to use lots of elements from this and Ensys all rolled into one and I think you're going to really enjoy that one as well. And then as soon as that one's done, hopefully I should have everything I need to be able to commence this one again and properly finish it. We've also got the Cooler Master World series premiering very soon, so that should be exciting if you want to see some of the top tier mods done by other modders around the world. Of course, now you wouldn't want to miss any of that, so stay up to date by subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. You can also find us over on Facebook, Instagram, builds.gg, and Twitter. We also have our Discord server linked in the description below. It's a fun, active community. Pop in, say hi, and have a chat with all of us. Also, we've got a merchandise store linked below, so if you want to support the channel, pop in there, see if anything strikes your fancy. Take care, folks, and I'll catch you next time.